Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, my beloved brethren and sistren, to the Tawahadul Bible Study Podcast. As always, remember to subscribe, share, and support. You may subscribe wherever you are hearing this from, hopefully with ears that hear, be it YouTube, Transistor, Anchor, Google, Spotify, Wazata. You may share the very words of God that you hear read aloud and recited by me and or the link to wherever you found this. Finally, you may support at aksum.substack.com or patreon.com slash tawahadu. Today, we are in the scroll of Revelation, the scroll of uncovering, the scroll of Apocalypse, chapter 14, verses 1 to 5. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him an hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne, and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. It's a very fascinating passage. How about that harpers harping with their harps? We, we got to appreciate the ancients' use of repetition to emphasize the point. Definitely here they wanted us to know the kind of merriness and, and song that was being sung and with what type of instrument up there in, in heaven. And heaven is, of course, the setting here, Mount Zion. The original Mount Zion is obviously here on earth, but the eschatological or the judgment Mount Zion is the one which is the epitome of the wilderness and it is untouched by the work of human hands of man-made constructs. It's a total construct of God alone, where you have to depend on God alone, is always the 144,000, which has come up a few times in the scroll already, is 12 times 12 times 1,000, 12 tribes of Israel or 12 tribes of Jacob times 12 apostles. The day itself is cut up into 24 hours in sets of 12 and 12. And 1,000 is a big number, not an exact number, but a big number. And so a whole lot of them plays on this idea of sexual immorality and it's interesting a lot of times nowadays people want to refer only to certain women as virgins and not men but here it's referring to men as virgins which is a rarity and what's interesting is that it's all functional in the sense of the name which is the presence of the father and the son are here and the virginity that is represented by those who are united to the name or the presence of the father and the son is that they are the opposite of those who commit adultery with other gods than the God of scripture. Those spoken about in the scroll of Hosea and in the scroll of Ezekiel. And so seeking after other gods is to lose your virginity and to become a fornicator, to become an adulterer. So, those who are the martyrs who've given witness, who bear witness and testimony, who give testimony with their lives are these people. And it's not limited to this number. It is to say they are made up of Jews and of Gentiles. It is the universal community that gathers around scripture to bow down and worship the God of scripture. Verses six to eight. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, 
having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Here is that point I was making earlier about the sexual morality. First, the good news is for all the tribes, all the nations, all the kindred, the totality of human kind and if we find aliens to preach to and herald to then it's for them to babylon as we learned from the petrine epistles is rome at the time but could functionally be america or ethiopia or wherever it is that you are if it is fallen and seeking after other gods and thus subject to the wine of the wrath that will be coming through the nostrils of the lord through his judgment of those who seek out other teachings, because there's only one God and one teaching. Verses 9 to 11. And the third messenger followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark mark of his name. Whether it is the Cappadocian fathers, whether it is Isaac of Nineveh, or whether it is David Bentley Hart, the error of apocastasis, the error of saying that you are trying to guarantee that all will be saved, whether it comes from selfish interest or not, is patently proved false by scripture. Scripture here says there will be judgment of these people who follow and worship the beast and its image. We talked about the dragon being the devil and Satan and the beast being a stand-in for Nero and everyone who is functionally like the emperor Nero and persecuting the church in worshiping him and his actions, the giant, violent, oppressive state. Woe to those people. It doesn't say it's going to be sugar and rainbows for those people. Instead, it says that their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night. That doesn't sound pleasant. Uh, it doesn't sound hunky-dory. It doesn't sound the way people want it to sound. There's judgment for the beast and there's judgment for the beast's image, and there's judgment for the worshipers of the beast and the beast's image. And so avoid that judgment, be one of the 144,000, give witness and testimony to the Lord, who is the paradoxical lamb and shepherd. Verses 12 to the end. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another messenger came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle, and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. 
And another angel came out. I keep switching back from messenger and angel. Anyway, you get the point. And another messenger or another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle saying, thrust in thy sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden without the city and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse bridles by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. The patient endurance of the saints resembles and reflects the long suffering the graciousness, the mercy, the loyal love, the loving kindness, the zealous goodness of the Lord. And I love that, that the blessing is given to those who die in the Lord. In other words, those who fall asleep with the Lord. This is a, a total encouragement to the martyrs and a woe of judgment to those who need to watch out for the crown and the sickle. The sickle is, of course, a farming implement that we've seen in the Scream movies and that we've seen in zombie movies can be used effectively against the human being as well or the uh, humanoids as well. And so we need to beware. The sickle is a very sharp farmer's instrument that pretty much looks like a small scythe. So watch out for the scythe. Watch out for the sickle. And be like the martyrs. And if you're one of them, do not lose hope, but give glory to God for all of those who have fallen asleep with him. And pray that if you don't get that blessing, at least you take some step along the path and keep walking and walking and walking until he judges all those who've ever lived and all those who've ever died.